So I wanted to make a quick video about how to grow strawberries. Now, strawberries are actually one of the easiest things in the world to grow, um, but there are a few kind of tricks to getting a nice long harvest and just a few interesting different ways of planting them. And for all the basic details, which I'm not going to cover in this video, I'll just refer you to my ebook. And there's a chapter in there all about growing strawberries with all of the nitty gritty details. So let's take a look around the strawberries that I've got. And I try to think of them is in the same way I try to think of potatoes. So, you know, traditionally with potatoes, you've got your first earlies, your second earlies, and your main crop and your late crop, sometimes people call those Christmas potatoes, and they grow on until the first frost. And I think that's quite a useful thing, way of thinking about almost everything that I grow, but particularly strawberries. So it's the 9th of May now, and these are my first early strawberries. And so I've got a lot of these in hanging baskets, and I absolutely love them. I think I've got 15 hanging baskets in here and it's just a great way of using this space which it otherwise is underutilized until the tomatoes which kind of sit down the back there grow up and uh, take over that space up there so there are a few things to bear in mind if you want a really nice bountiful crop and the first thing is you start these with second year runners if you can so in your main crop strawberry bed you just let a few runners root and then the year after you dig these up in september time and put them into those hanging baskets you leave your hanging baskets outside all the way through september october november december january and then you kind of look at the weather forecast and make a decision are you going to bring them in in january into the polytunnel or greenhouse or are you going to wait until February? Now this year the weather was really awful in January and they'd had loads of frosts all the way through early winter. About 10, 12 frosts, something like that is pretty good for strawberries. So I decided to bring mine in in late January rather than wait till February because we didn't want them to go through that really cold spell with really bad wind chill that would have really, you know, knocked them back a bit. Brought them in, just stuck them up here in the canopy gave them a bit of water and didn't do anything until very early spring. So sometime early March, when I gave them a little bit of blood fish and bone meal. Then a few, about a month later, the compost starts to shrink in these pots. And so I refilled them all with compost. And that's a pretty important step. And I started feeding them with Vitax uh, organic tomato, not tomato, organic strawberry food. And then pretty much that is it. No attention at all apart from watering. You do need watering quite a lot. So I would say every other day if it's sunny. Um, you know, as we get into summer, they might need watering every day. Now these won't give us strawberries for very long. That's one of the problems when you're forcing things, you know, you don't get a very long period of yield, but it's long enough. And so at the end of the harvest period, I just compost these plants. I, I compost the compost and I compost the plants and I reuse these uh, hanging baskets for something else. So this year I'm trying growing these, which are cosmic purple, and short and sweet and a few other varieties of carrots and my objective is that in august i'm going to plant all of these hanging baskets up with carrots and harvest them all the way through winter as salad carrots just one tub a week and as i said i've got 15 of these tubs and i've got th three more that i've got carrots in at the moment so i've got 18 tubs so that's going to last me pretty much all the way through winter. This is an experiment. I've never tried growing carrots in these little tiny containers before. Obviously you wouldn't get cooking carrots, but for little salad, salad carrots, it's just possible that I get a crop, but they do need quite a bit of water every, every three days. So these are my second early strawberries. And these are looking pretty good. 
just started to come into flower. I've taken the cold frame top off now because I think now that they're in flower and growing well, I don't want them to come on too early because I want them in succession after the ones in the polyton. And I give them a fair amount of space. So I've got nine plants in here. And you can see here, I did just a few of them did get a frost, but uh, I'm not too worried about that. They've got plenty of harvest left in them. And in the gaps in between these strawberries, I've got garlic. And that's one of the things I really like to do is find good interplants for strawberries because they are a very short harvest plant and they are in the bed for a long time. So it is useful to try and find something else that you can harvest out of the bed. And I, we find that garlic is absolutely fantastic. In fact, the best garlic that we've ever harvested came from a strawberry bed. They just seem to really grow well together. Now, of course, you do want a new stock of um, strawberries for your polytunnel. So you really want some of these plants to root their runners. So then once your main crop um, are finished, then you want to move on to your everbearing or perpetual strawberries. And these keep fruiting until the last frost. They do do an early fruit. I generally pull the flowers off those because the, this variety, Albion, the first fruits off these taste really pretty rubbish. Uh, they're just not worth eating. And obviously we've got our main crop ones anyway, so we don't really care. But the second flowering, are amazing absolutely amazing and perennial uh, strawberries are quite a lot different uh, in the way that they look you can see they've got lots of small leaves they never really die back i generally cut them back though in um, autumn to something that looks a bit like that so basically just all the new young growth and i cut off all the old growth that will have built up and they get pretty big, so the old growth will be sort of right up here in a big dome. I cut all that back, and what you'll find at the bottom is these new young uh, leaves. And so I'll leave those to grow on through winter. And strawberries always a bit, look a bit rough over winter, but they just come back and they look so gorgeous. You can grow strawberries in all sorts of different containers. Uh, one of the things we really like to do is this is what we've got on Debbie's plot are these little planting pockets which are just in the pallet fence and they're just a, a little bit of um, black plastic just looped around and stapled to the inside of the fence and the strawberries grow really lovely in there. So they're very creative. Now obviously runners are really important when it comes to growing strawberries because that's how you propagate new plants. And also you need to take the runners off if you don't want new plants, just so the plants don't waste all their energy on growing hundreds of runners. Um, but we haven't got any runners at this time of year. I just refer you to the ebook, which covers all about propagating new plants from runners. And then back home in our kitchen garden, in the fruit garden section, surrounded by blue blueberries, gooseberries, and raspberries. We've got the main crop strawberries and three different varieties all come at slightly different times in summer. And this, this is an old bed, probably know, eight years old, something like that, but it still yields enough for eating fresh every day through summer. So you know, it serves its purpose. And we've got nowhere else really to put that strawberry bed. So it's fine. It does its job there and we just leave it. One day we will switch this over probably and grow uh, brassicas and spinach and stuff like that here and move this bed somewhere else. But uh, for now, it's staying put. So I've mentioned it a few times, but I've got this little ebook. If you go to gardening-ebook.info, you'll find it, or there's a description. There's a link in the description below. Scroll down till you get to individual growing guides, and then scroll down till you get to strawberries. And then, yeah, there's a lot more comprehensive information here than I provided in the video. 
go through all the different types of strawberries, where to grow them, how to grow them, how to harvest them, etc. etc. Plenty of info here. Propagate them, establishing new beds, etc. etc. So I hope you like this quick video. My name is Steve Richards. This is the Seaside Kitchen Garden and Allotment Channel, and I'll see you soon.